how, how you know that's one thing we didn't touch on how early was it that you knew you was gonna be in comedy was this like you know five six <laughs> seven like how early was it for you i always knew i wanted to be famous and i wanted to do something in the way of performing so i wasn't necessarily trained or, or pushed in that direction in terms of proper diet um and discipline. I went from condos to pops house, on calls now bus routes. The one person who had the key to my heart took it and checked. Hey, so one thing that I can tell is that uh, I could I could see you know when you talk about the stories, the passion. Mm. You know what I'm saying that you have yeah. for you know being in comedy, you know, <laughs> and everything like that. So you know you could tell this is something from day one. You knew. You know, yeah. you knew early on, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You know uh, uh, how how you know that's one thing we didn't touch on. How early was it that you knew you was gonna be in comedy? Was this like you know five, six, <laughs> seven? Like how early was it for you? No, I I, I probably figured out figured it out around twelve, thirteen, because because I, I always knew I wanted to be famous and I wanted to do something in the way of performing. I just didn't know what it was, and and my dad is a was a huge boxing guy. So that's another thing that he and I did together. We, you know, he would watch the old Ali fights and, you know, George Foreman, and I would watch it with him, and that was fun for me. So I became a boxing fan. So I thought, you know what? Let me try boxing. Mm -hmm. But then I realized you, you gotta, you gotta work out. Yeah. You gotta eat right. <laughs> <laughs> and I come from a mother from Mississippi and a father from Tennessee, yeah. and salt and grease was main ingredients in our house. Yeah, Everything yeah. fried. So I wasn't necessarily trained or, or pushed in that direction in terms of proper diet um and discipline yeah. uh so as much as i love boxing the ingredients that it takes to be successful at that yeah, yeah, mm -mm. yeah. so then i thought you know what i like I'm, you know again coming up in the 80s the birth of hip-hop yeah. you know and i was you know a rap fan run dmc ll you know the beastie boys uh, fat boys so i was like man i'm gonna be a rapper yeah and then you know if, when you put your ego away you just realize you, you don't have the skills for that <laughs> and i respect the art too much to uh half-ass it now if if yeah. i was coming up in today's era i could be a star uh because of how garbage rap is now <laughs> but back then when when content and quality mattered uh i just didn't have that skill set man yeah. i mean don't get me wrong if if i if i you know smoke a little weed have a little drink you know and really concentrate i can rap uh but i'm not no rap i would never in a million years call myself a rapper when you look at the greats the icons you know uh, ll jay-z nas the real spitters eminem jadakiss come on man there's levels to this shit yeah. and and i'm i i you know i would embarrass myself if i tried to act like i could rap like that for real but but i can you know Accidents, I can do an accident. You got some ball. Yeah, I can accidentally spit some fire now. <laughs> One time, two times. It's almost like them dudes is so consistent with it because it's who they are. It's like, let me put it in, we in, in weapons terms. Like, the motherfuckers is like an AR-15 or, 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 you know, AK-47. Rounds after rounds. My ability to rap, I'm like a 1776 musket shot. I got one <laughs> pow, and then you got to reload the stick. I take a minute. Yeah, <laughs> one good shot. That's one it. good shot. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. My my reload is eight days, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and what the hit you mentioned too. Yeah, so you don't think none of the rappers now got it? Cause you said not not now. You well, can jump in you now know, and do your thing. You know, Dave East, uh, Kendrick, J Cole, okay. Benny the Butcher. You know, there's there's some dudes out there. You know, join, was it Lucas Joyner. Yeah, yeah, uh, Joyner's Luca. Join, join yeah, us Luca. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's some yeah. cats out there. But my argument is always back in my day. I'm sound like an old man, but back in my day, the 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 '90s era, the golden era of rap, and early 2000s, quality was in abundance. Yeah. The garbage was you had to, you need a micro a, a, a magnifying glass to find the garbage. Now it's the reverse. The garbage is in abundance. The quality rappers, you need a, a magnifying glass. Yeah. Them niggas is a needle in a haystack. So, you know, yeah. the game is reversed now, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, rap, rap is different nowadays, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, people just put in our videos now. You got social media and everything like that. So I think rap is very cluttered. 
you know it's a lot you know what i'm saying but i i still think it's a lot of quality artists out there it's just so much going on so much garbage now to the yeah, it's hard to I find the quality can, amongst the garbage. garbage. Yeah, yeah, it's more yeah. garbage than it is quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, people are hit. You know, when I get into arguments with people online about this, they go, "Man, you got the underground, the the quality rappers. They not the mainstream and the radio play. They the underground. It's like you got to go find them. You got to look for them. Whereas in the '90s and the 2000s, you didn't have to look. They were there. Nah. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, facts. That's yeah. facts. You know, it's different. It's different. You know, uh, kind of before we go back to the story, kind of touching on rap, you know, right now, I don't I don't know if this is something you notice more in the 90s, too, and everything like that. But now you also notice that we're going through that era right now where we just see everybody, you know, uh, 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 videos come out when it comes down to snitching and rap. That's like the topic right now. Snitching. Snitching. You know, rap. You know, you, you have uh, 1090 Jake right now exposing everybody. Mm. You know, Boston Reggie. You know what I'm saying? 03 Greedo. Uh, you just seeing this a lot. You know, um, First, did, did you notice this like in, in, in the nineties era? And um and, and what how do you feel about rappers' careers just being ended left and right because they have these videos popping out of nowhere of them snitching in the interrogation room? And, you know, it's it's a, it's a it's a different game now, man. You know, this this I call it the goofy era. You know, a yeah. lot of goofy shit going on now that yeah. we just didn't do back in my day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to be honest, even when you when you mentioned some of this. It's a head scratcher for me because at 48 years old, I don't even really keep up with what's going on now. Yeah. So, you know, like anytime I do like Vlad TV and he'll bring up, he'll name some a rapper from today and what's going on. I'm like, I'm going to be honest, man. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I just, you know, I'm at that age, man, where it's like my 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 rap fan jersey is is about to be hung in the rafters. <laughs> I'm about to retire, man, because there's just yeah. nothing out here for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, I feel